Um, as Casey said, my name is Nicole, head of community over at Trusted. And tonight um, we want to go through a really lovely hour long session with our amazing host, Debbie Harbinson. And if you're not familiar with Trusted, we are the place for the modern nurse. We have an incredible array of resources for you, whether it's career or travel nursing, we do place travel nurses in all 50 states. And we do lots of events like these. And we have a few more for the rest of the year. And Casey and I are already planning a lot for next year. And we're really excited to share them with you all. So again, thank you for being here and for making space for some joy in your journey. And with that, I will hand it over to Debbie. Oh, thank you, Nicole. And I'd like to thank Casey too at this point and certainly all of you for joining us. Um, you know, this is um, an opportunity for us to get together. And what I'm going to ask is, um, you know, there is, <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to really say the uh, most understated statement in my life. There's a lot going on in our world right now, you know? And I'm going to ask that maybe you just kind of put that aside for maybe this next hour and um, just kind of sit back, reflect. We'll do a little reflection of things in our lives that might already be there stirring and uh, you're kind of wondering how maybe you could grow um, that feeling of peace, comfort, happiness. And so some of these things that we'll do during this presentation will allow for that. But then our brain starts in and it starts saying things like, well, what about this? And how about that? And, you know, so I'm just going to ask when that starts happening, just say, thank you very much. We're just going to sit back right now <laughs> and enjoy this. So I know we'll have an opportunity for people to put questions into the chat space. So that's great. We'll have time for that at the end. And as well, um, Nicole and Casey were able to provide me with some interesting um, or people that um, people mentioned some things they were interested in that I would cover during the presentation. So if I don't cover them, um, just please let us know and we'll have time for that as well. So um, I'm again, Debbie Harbinson, and let's just kind of go through how this agenda will go. I'm next going to talk about um, my why and my experience in all of this. And we're just going to touch on um, the science of joy and fun, because believe me, that could be a whole nother couple day presentation, um, just on what laughter and joy does for you physically. Um, so we're just going to approach this from an experience of looking at our mind and body and spirit just being one and how joy can really lift us up um, at times when we're just maybe needing that extra support or maybe we're really looking at a big crisis in our life. And, and then as well, how to share that because we find that that's really a big piece of joy. Um, it's not enough to have it inside. There's many ways and um, opportunities for you to share it with others. And we find it just grows. So we're going to also do an experimental, experiential exercise and um, that I'm going to just invite you to participate in as you like. We'll give you instruction when it comes time. And then I'm just gonna kind of wrap it up and then we'll have time for questions and answers. So. I want you to also notice on this slide about joy. So joy, um, when you think of the word, could that mean different things in different times of your life? Could it mean different things to different people? Does it come to you with maybe a, oh, I don't know, maybe a preconceived idea of what joy should be and all of the things and the rituals that you must do to achieve that? And is it on the outside or is it on the inside? So just kind of looking at those words and what, what, what could resonate with that. So please, Nicole, next slide. So just a bit of my um, information, because again, that would be a couple of days. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it wouldn't take very long to go through my information, but I just thought I'd let you know. So my personal information is um, I'm originally from Indiana. Um, I am one of those Hoosiers, <laughs> and I relocated to Arizona, and it's been about two, 38 years here, and I just really love it. Um, I have a husband, I have a daughter who is, by the way, moving to Hawaii, so any tips that you might want to share with me, any of you travelers that have been to Hawaii, please let me know, or if you are traveling there and you want to know of someone on the other end, <laughs> we have Erin Harbinson there now. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, um, so that's kind of, and then we have two dogs, two lovely dogs and uh, Chumley and Suli, uh, American Eskimo and a Labradoodle. So we have quite active here. So my professional information is, so my background is I'm one of those original uh, diploma grad nurses. And I went four years and received a diploma. <laughs> So, um, uh, of course, then I needed to go on for more schooling, enough so that it was about another seven years <laughs> getting my bachelor's degree because I opted to take one class at a time. And um, this is going to sound like the olden times <laughs> because we didn't have online programming. There was no fast tracking. And um, so I took basically one class at a time as a mom. Um, you know, uh, also trying to work some extra time in a management role in that. It got to the point that people would ask me at that time I was working in the operating room and they would say, oh, so Deb, what's up? And I'd say, oh, I'm in school again this semester. Really? <laughs> what are you going to be? And I'd say, a nurse. <laughs> and they'd say, we thought you already were. And I'd say, exactly. <laughs> so, but then I went on and I got my master's and um, uh, I'm just going to share next about um, what the HNBC, BBC is in um, the next slide. But before that, one of the fun facts is, which kind of blends into my other um, slide is, so I enjoyed laughter. It was something that was always around my family. Um, it was just, we just laughed. Um, there were times that later on when I was caring for my mother who had had a stroke, um, we would laugh for no reason, really. It, it was just the stress. And we knew that we were relieving, releasing the stress, but I had no idea how important that was at the time. And um, later on, I learned a bit more about it and how healing that is. And sure enough, I found out about an organization called the World Laughter Tour. And so you won't need to write this down because it is in the PowerPoint as one of your resources. And from there, I became a certified laughter leader. And I also started helping with the curriculum. Yes, you can get continuing ed for becoming a certified laughter leader. And I really cared about, at that time I was doing quite a bit of outreach. And in Phoenix in June, mm, sometimes it can already be maybe about a hundred, um, excuse me, 90 some to sometimes a hundred degrees. So I just want you to know that I am that kind of a nurse that for my patients, in June, I traveled to San Diego to take a training that was two days of laughter. I mean, I will do anything for my patients. And this was one of the things that I offered to do. Later on, I learned that there was a whole organization out there, um, firemen, policemen, as well as nurses, healthcare providers that have come together in a clown camp that was in La Crosse, Wisconsin. And so once again, I decided to go off to in the summer and attend clown camp for a couple weeks where there I studied things like balloonology and many other things that would allow me to become that type of a caring clown. So um, that's another experience that you can always contact me about if you're more interested. They're now starting it again, of course, because of our restrictions of um, they're with COVID-19. They're not meeting together in place for the clown camp this past year, but they're looking forward to it in the future. Highly recommend it. So next slide, please. So my why is that most of my experience in, in nursing, why I followed this route of certified laughter leader and the HNB-BC stands for a holistic nurse board certified. And the reason I did that was I was working with patients and I just knew that so many of the things that we were doing for them, um, especially in my role in the operating room, it was very high tech. And we were not given the time nor the skills, um, as I might say later on in the trainings, as well as um, what I could find for myself. Um, we weren't given those skills on how to connect with people like that. And what I learned was in the operating room, at least, as people were coming to a very 
frightening time in their life to be hand, you know, handing their body over or a parent handing their child over to strangers and they were going to be basically unconscious and allow us to perform a surgery on them, uh, that how frightening that was. And I learned that making eye contact and smiling and um, reassuring them that I was going to be there the entire time Whenever I did that, there was just, uh, not only was there that immediate confirmation that I had made a connection, but then later on, there would be letters, notes, cards, saying things like, you knew, you knew just what to say to me. And I didn't say anything, really. I mean, I just said, I'm going to be here, you know, I'll hold your hand, make eye contact, stay with them. And I started realizing about the power of this. And as I moved into home health, really seeing the difference in how patients responded to following treatment. You know, here we were coming into their home, we were teaching them uh, different skills. Maybe it was somebody who had diabetes. And so now we're showing them, you know, how to inject themselves with insulin and reinforcing that, that just that connection and saying, I'm here for you. And maybe always uh, making certain that I'm smiling, that um, I'm connecting with them on, you know, what lightens your day, uh, what makes you happy, things like that, saying those kinds of things and directing them towards that would start a conversation. And before you know it, they're talking about things that are very em empowering to them. And I can then later use them in my nursing care. Now, I know I'm probably not saying anything that's groundbreaking to most of you. And one of the challenges is, and one of the things that we see is, okay, this is all great and good, but many times I'm running from room to room. And now, especially with COVID-19 and having to have, you know, the entire gear and everything else, plus your own worry and concern for yourself and your family, that just adds another whole level to that. But what I'm going to ask you, because right now my saying these things might be taking your brain in that direction of what if, but I can't and taking you down that road, just kind of being open to that. Remember one of the things that I said, and there were many times when I was caring for people that maybe had some type of an infection, uh, MRSA was something that we dealt with quite frequently. And, um, making that eye contact with people. That is so powerful. And what I learned was that that not only helped them, but me as well. I started feeling lighter and connected. And it wasn't that I hadn't done it before. What I did now differently was I noticed it. I paid attention to it. And when you do that, just like any other habit that you might start to begin to have, it's all about practice, right? So um, just going to say that what that started to do was lead me to search out maybe certifications or things that were really helping or excuse me, happening in a more mental health um, area. And that's where I started exploring things like positive psychology. Um, I learned about the World Laughter Tour. Um, I learned about, um, you know, all of this kind of, you know, neuro-linguic pr programming, um, getting together with people and really concentrating on how we communicate with each other. So that just started leading me down that road. So I wouldn't say that there's necessarily a path. I noticed that on some of the uh, questions about this presentation about career paths and things, so what I would suggest to you is there's organizations like the American Holistic Nurses Association. There's um, other many great nursing as well as mental health organizations that might um, interest you in some other modalities that can assist you in the area that you, you really enjoy as a nurse, your own specialty, or it just might lead you down another road to a whole other specialty. So we, if you have any questions about that, we can address them later. But that's pretty much what it was. And we're in, when I started moving into this direction of really focusing on communication with people, um, I just allowed myself to be that being. You know, we talk about, a, you know, whether a person, um, when we start talking about humans, and, you know, there's not any mistake 
that part of being a human being, the word B-E-I-N-G is in there. When we are present and we are being, there's so many possibilities. And that's what we're going to talk about next. Thanks, Nicole. So one of the poets that I just really love, and I, and it's interesting, he's, um, at the time, the country was Persian. Um, but um, he, uh, Rumi, is a poet who I guess is very popular in the United States. But I think what really, when you think about it, he lived around 1200. I think he was born in 1203. And so during that time, a lot of the knowledge and the wisdom and um, the poetry that he shared at that time is really pertinent to now. So I always look at that. When I look at things like Ayurvedic medicine, Chinese medicine, you look at ancient poets, mystics, spirituality, you'll see this entire theme. We think right now that what we're going through is the worst ever. You know, I'm not saying everybody thinks this, but some people really feel that. And maybe in their life, for whatever reason, whatever's happening in their life, it could be the worst ever for them. However, when you start looking at the wisdom of what has come before, there will be other things that you can find that might either allow you comfort and or will also maybe give you some tools and strategies to move forward. And I think Rumi's poetry is one of those things. Your loyalty to that is a ring at the door. Keep knocking and the joy inside will eventually open a window and look out to see who's there. So when we're in a time of crisis, we start to feel very fearful. And then we start, it's only natural, it's called being a human. <laughs> we start looking for a way out when we're in the midst of thinking that is not our best thinking. When you're frightened, that's not the time to try and get out of a situation. Many times we're, you know, if you're in a, um, let's say for instance, you're in a car accident or something and you're inside the car. Yes, your best thinking will come forward, you know, to, to get you out of that car, the best that it can be at that time. But if we're also before the car accident, we're, we're upset, we're anxious, we've had a horrible day at work, we're, you know, mad maybe at family members and we haven't slept well and we still get in the car, we've now done an action that came from that thinking that wasn't our best thinking. If we had been relaxed and at peace, we would have went, you know, I'm not sleeping well. I have no business getting behind the wheel of a car. And so that's just a very small example, but you know, maybe pay attention to that. When you're starting to feel very um, upset at what's happening, just kind of slow the thinking down. And that's what we're going to be talking about, a strategy for that, or just an awareness even. So, um, and this poem kind of speaks to that because, you know, when you're, everything is just a mess. Every, you can't, you don't even want to say what, what's going to happen next because you're afraid there is something that will happen next. So when that keeps happening, just be there just know that something will open up for you. And that's what he's talking about, that you just keep knocking, you keep trying, you don't ever um, uh, just give up and say, there's nothing more I can do. It's just being there with that. Next slide. So one of the things I really like about this is um, smiling. I, you know, as I mentioned before, the, when I started looking into smiling was kind of the way to make a connection with people and start with them. Um, there's so much research behind it. We're gonna to touch a little bit on the next slide about some other things, but here in the meantime, you know, it's, it's really that starting with a smile. Not only do we know that smiling warms up the, the circulation in your face and just makes you feel as if you're more engaged um, and also starts that idea of energy, blood flowing through your body. I mean, we have all the muscles that do that. And interestingly enough, they're there for smiling. If you're frowning, we don't have that much engagement. So um, one of the other things that they've learned, and it was in the research, just an aside, people that smile more look younger. 
And um, yes, I'm 90 years old. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, but the point is that, you know, there is that um, whole physiological thing that goes on in our body, our eyes um, start to moisten. We know that when we laugh so hard, that usually starts with a smile. Rarely does somebody go from nothing without being amused to full on laughing till your stomach hurts. I mean, there, there's this bit of a gradual that usually starts with a smile. And many times it's finding the unexpected humor. So in the cartoon, I think there's a spy among us, you know, the idea is to find something that's not expected. You know, we don't expect a dog to be sitting and the cats obviously are allowing him or him or her to be there, you know, so you don't expect that. Um, so, so looking for those moments, um, one of the things that I think is very interesting in travel nursing is um, because at times in my operating room years, <laughs> I would do somewhat of a travel nurse position, excuse me, I would work at different hospitals in the area within a certain time frame. So one of the things that I noticed was because I was going to a different um, hospital. I was uh, going in a different way of the building. There were always new people there. There were different, it, it, it really honed my uh, skill for curiosity. And we know that curiosity is one of the foundational pieces in looking at how to lighten up your life. Because if you're curious, you've approached it without judgment. You've, if you're curious about what your day is going to be like, you're not saying, oh, today is going to be horrible. You know, I last night I looked at the census. Oh, I got that email this morning about the census. You know, I, I know who's going to be working today. I know who's not going to be working today. I'm here. I'm a traveler. They've, they're, they're probably... Uh, not enough people, that's why they pulled me in, you know, all of these things that you already are coming with judgment. If you start the day with, uh, um, or look at a situation with curiosity, then it's like, hmm, I wonder how it's going to be different today. I wonder how I'm going to be able to connect with my patients in a different way. I wonder what I will find as I drive to work. Not, not, it's not about work, Ah, oh, the leaves are changing. You know, oh, the temperature is different in the air. Oh, I'm kind of smelling like, you know, um, like here I'm in Arizona and people say, how do you know fall, um, fall and spring? You know, it's definitely the desert plants get, give off a different odor. It's just so fun to be here long enough that you start to notice that. Um, so when you start looking at things with a curiosity, then it doesn't take long many times for things to become a bit more pleasant. And when the pleasant is there, I would encourage you to start using um, opportunities like smiling or using smiling with many opportunities. So the next slide, um, we talk about mirror neurons. And when I, what I love about being a human being is we are amazing inside. We have inside, outside. <laughs> I, our body is incredible. Talk about looking at something with curiosity. Um, so, um, and, that, and that can be kind of humorous too, <laughs> when you're very curious about yourself. <laughs> but the point is that when we think of mirror neurons, they are allowing us to connect with other people. We are made to connect with others. When we start feeling as if we are all alone and we don't know what else to do and who can we call on and, and all of that's starting to happen, be aware that maybe what you're starting to do is shut off this uh, primal way that we were built to connect with other people. There are several examples of that. So I just did a spiel on laugh, um, smiling, excuse me. So when we smile, when we, or excuse me, let me back up. When you look out into a crowd of people, our eyes are connected with looking at people that are smiling at us or that have that kind of intention in their eyes that would mean friendliness. We can see this for miles away. So we may not be able to 
depending on our vision, be able to describe the person. But we are able with our amygdala in our brain, very basic to connect with, <clears throat> excuse me, who will want to be our friend, who will not harm us. This is built into us. And then you add a smile. And we know that then that is, some, uh, that is um, uh, an opportunity for us to connect with people. So mirror neurons can really work not only with the people around us, but they can also work with, for instance, with our patients. So when you're doing something that like smiling and um, doing be behaviors that are uh, um, actions that we already understand, for instance, we expect that if somebody is smiling with us, that there is going to be this intent on connection with us. So we're already okay with that. However, there's other opportunities. So say for instance, right now, I'm reaching for a bottle of water. So when I pick up this, you see the bottle of water and I start to drink it, you have this expectation that this is what I'm going to do with this bottle of water. I'm not going to dump it on the computer. I mean, that, that's not normal, you know, shall I say. So think about using this when we're doing things with our patients even, or we're doing things with our families that we're made to communicate with other people without even saying anything to them. So this is really an interesting thing. It was discovered back in the 90s. There's a whole uh, research thing on this, but just to know that this is something, again, we're made for this. Next slide, please. So another thing that I just love, because I can talk to you all day about um, endorphins and what starts in the amygdala and as we you know, look at our brain from the frontal cortex and all of that, but what I love are these primal things, these, these opportunities that we have to really correct anything that's going on, sustain us, make us feel better, um, uh, really make us feel as if we have more energy. And one of those is the vagus nerves. Well, it's the vagus nerve, but there's two branches. So the vagus nerves and the branches and how they go throughout our body. One of the things that we know is that with the vagus nerve, not only, you know, 10th cranial nerve as it runs down our um, body, that it innervates um, our gut, our heart, I mean, our organs in our body. There's just so much that we are starting to learn about the vagus nerve. But one of the things that we can do to calm ourselves down are to do things that we know um, really quiet and support the vagus nerve. So laughter is one of them. I know on this slide, it says the simulation often leads to laughter as a side effect. But that's because it's allowing, it's, it's more of a nervous laugh that you might hear people do. So that calms things down. However, if we're also wanting to improve our mood, one of the easiest ways is laughter. And it doesn't have to be over a joke. Later on, we'll, we'll talk about that. But it just the exercise of laughter. There are many other tools that you can use. Humming is one of them. It's not any surprise. It's something that's ancient old, like yoga, uses the mm, That is centering your, um, working with your vagus nerve. Um, I work, currently, I work with people that, um, caregivers for people that have uh, dementia. And so one of the things that we started doing was giving them harmonicas, the person with dementia, because when they're, becoming very agitated and anxious. It's, it, that's just that behavior is because there's an unmet need. So while we're trying to figure it out, maybe it could just be some thinking that's going on that's not really going to be helpful or make sense during this um, day or during that period of time, but they're still becoming more and more agitated. So giving them a harmonica because that has a harmonica is the humming with it. So then many people can remember old tunes. That's the beauty of working with music and those that have dementia, autism. So coming up with this idea of putting a harmonica in and having them hum, again, starts to physiologically change them and calm them down. And isn't that a lot better than looking for a medication or you know, just feeling upset yourself as a care partner? 
So um, praying for someone else. So later on, we're going to do an exercise. And when we do that, thinking of someone that you love that might be really challenged right now, maybe it's yourself, um, just thinking of them and using that as an opportunity to wish them well, that also affects us. All of these things are built within us. I know I mentioned the harmonica, but you can just hum anyway. You see children do that. You know, children, if they're a little upset or, you know, they're, they're, they're starting to get nervous about something, they may just break into humming. And that's, that's how primal that is. So why I'm bringing that up again is all of these things that we have to regulate us are built in. You don't need any extra equipment. You can always buy other things, I guess, but you don't need anything else, listening to music. So anyway, next slide. So where is the joy? <laughs> so joy, I'm just gonna say this right now, this is gonna be a really quick slide. <laughs> so joy, love, comfort, peace, all of that is inside of us. When we start feeling distress, that's because we have started to separate from what is already our core and inside of us. When people are very troubled and they do horrific things, there is not this cognition in their head that said, I'm going to try, I mean, like the first thing off is, I am going to try to do the worst thing that people have ever seen in humanity. That is not the first thought. The first thought is, I don't feel good. Something is not connected. Something is taking me away from me being a human being. And so when we look at every single human being, when you see a baby, there are not, uh, well, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm just going to say I've never heard of, and I've never ran into an evil baby. <laughs> you know, I mean, babies are just full of joy and laughter and spirit, right? It's later on when we're about three and four that we start getting a whole new lens put on how we see the world. And our thinking starts to take us down a whole different um, road. So um, thinking about that, that the joy is already in the inside of us. Next, what we're going to do is how we kind of bubble it up and get it going. Next slide. So we're gonna talk about mirthful mindfulness. There's probably not a certification on this. I kind of just made that up and put the words together. <laughs> the idea behind it is that when you're thinking of that inner joy, that mirth inside, and you're allowing it to be full of these pleasant thoughts and feelings and body sensations and that, and just not looking at things without judgment, what starts to happen is you start looking at things with more of going back to that idea of curiosity. Let's go to the next slide. So right now, um, I'm going to ask you to join me in this opportunity. You'll just, um, right where you're at, you don't have to close your eyes if you don't want to. So learn to do these kinds of things where you don't have to have a special space. As I mentioned, I work with care partners who work for people with dementia, I, who um, care for people. It could be a spouse, a child, or whatever. And their person that they live with is challenged by de dementia. So they don't have time to get away. Um, so I always teach things you can do like that, spot on the moment. So while with your eyes open, notice your breath. If you're standing or if you're sitting, notice what that feels like on your body. Notice the chair supporting you. Also, turn your palm, your hands up where your palms are up. And now just notice the circulation in your hands. Isn't that amazing that you can just do that? I mean, it's flowing throughout our entire body and we can just bring our awareness to that. I spent many years studying like guided imagery and hypnotherapy and that. And to me, the most powerful part is just that we can be aware of our body inside. Notice if there's any smells in your space. Hopefully, if they are, they're pleasant smells. <laughs> but again, just to not be in a, any way of judgment. If they are unpleasant, knowing that, my gosh, there are people that have, are unable to do that. It's a good thing we can smell things that are unpleasant when we think of things like fire and so on. Listen for sounds in your environment. Is there a car maybe going by? Uh, maybe an airplane? 
um, maybe it's just the the sound of a motor running in the background. It could be air conditioning or wherever you are. It could be for, you know a heater. Um, the air moving against your skin. If you really spend time noticing that, you can you can determine is that just um, a breeze? Is it just pressure? Is there something that you might feel? And then also when you're wanting to recenter and just come back and be clear and aware, notice colors and shapes. One of the times that I realized, I, nobody had instructed this, but when I was working in the operating room as a scrub nurse, one of the times that I used to be centered before I would go into surgery was when I was scrubbing my hands. Right now, this is what we're talking about all the time is washing our hands, right? Which as a nurse educator, which I've been doing that all the time. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> again, that's another lecture. <laughs> but right now, just to um, do that. So we can model that, right? You know, as I go out into public and I'm in a restroom, I'm seeing, I'm not seeing people washing their hands as long as they should be washing their hands, but they got the mask on, you know? So thinking about how this could be an opportunity to share that, not only does it bring you into more awareness, but teaching your family, you know, how to make this, you know, noticing the bubbles on their hands, their skin, the way it smells. This allows us to not only do something healthy for us right now and um, keep other people happy, healthy, but the other point is that it gives people an idea that, oh, I don't have to go off, you know, to meditate somewhere. I can do it right here, right now. And this is what we need to be realizing, that we need to have this um, uh, awareness. Any awareness of gratitude can happen because, boy, when I'm washing my hands, and I remember thinking this when I was in surgery, um, doing a couple missions, you know, in places where clean running water was a challenge. Here I was right there in an organization where I had clean running water, I had soap easily accessible, you know, we had a mask, you know, I think that's one thing that we've learned, the importance of having this PPE that we had available for us. All of those things start to really change inside um, how you, um, how you look at life and look around you. I love Anne Frank's quote, think of all the beauty still left around you and be happy. And here is someone who just every time you read something about her and what she attempted to do throughout her life, uh, really did not take that for granted that whatever she had. So next slide. So let's do this experiential where it's, um, these are called therapeutic laughter exercises. And as you notice from the cartoon, your husband's doing well, but we're going to keep him overnight because he's funny and I'm lonely. <laughs> so as a nurse, we probably have not done that too much. <laughs> we can usually find something else to laugh with. We don't, we don't need to keep a patient over. However, the idea is that when you have a spirit of wanting to be with others to enjoy life and to maybe find the lighter side of things, it doesn't mean that you have to ah, ha, ha, laugh out loud. It just means that you appreciate. Sometimes people just like to be with people that appreciate laughter. It could be just smiling, talking about the gratitude and, and things like that. What we learn is that the more we're in that, the more that becomes our life and we start seeking that out. So um, I'm going to ask Nicole, what we decided was just to allow people to, um, this is probably a little bit more for me so I can see you <laughs> if you like, as well as hear you, and I'm going to leave you with some laughter exercises. And again, this is all just inviting people to participate. You don't have to. Um, this is something that I do also. I'm just going to put a plug in for later on for my website so I don't forget because I'm not going to talk about that. But I have an opportunity for you to sign up. And one of the things that I would like to do is start inviting nurses to um, 
come along and we'll just do like a laughter club kind of thing, laughter circle, I call them. It's kind of hard to imagine a circle when we're all like face to face. <laughs> but um, these are laughter exercises that I learned that are actually a part of what we call laughter club or laughter circle. And the point is just to do these exercises because they actually get everything um, moving throughout your body. We know that um, when you're, when the blood is circulating around, when I mentioned with smiling up in your face, you're uh, also moving, um, digestion, everything is happening in the body. And it just orchestrates into this beautiful way of us feeling better and connecting more with people. So, um, when we do these, there is a chant that I'm going to teach you. So just know you have um, not joined a cult or anything when you showed up. <laughs> the chant is ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. And it's really a nice way of uh, allowing me to help you transition into another laughter exercise. So, um, and, and certainly with doing nurses, I'm just gonna kind of look at my view here and see if I'm seeing everyone here. So, um, so yeah, so if you want to look at each other, great. You can unmute, un, um, um, show yourself through your video. <laughs> and um, the laughter exercises know that you can also practice them on their own. Now, I've had people do this where they've lived alone and they say that they're always concerned that people might think there's something wrong with them. And I always say, just let me know. I'll come and get you no problem. <laughs> Depends on where you are. <laughs> so, um, but you can also just know that you can appreciate this idea of laughter and encourage it with other people around you. From now on, all of you that attended this, even if you view the recording later, you are now part of laughter ambassadors, okay? So what that means is that is a heavy responsibility. When somebody starts laughing and enjoying themselves, you do not come along and say, what are you laughing at? And start being the person who says, shh, we can't laugh here. Now we all know as, uh, as professionals, there's times when we maybe shouldn't be laughing out loud or we should be sensitive to what is happening around us. I know this is a um, laughter uh, level at 200, where at two, you know, you're at uh, laughter 201 and we don't have to get into the safeness of that <laughs> and not laughing at people. But the point is that you are now empowered to encourage other people to laugh. So let's start with the chant and it's ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. If you've got people at home or around you and you don't want to unmute, but you want to laugh with them, then just jump on in, okay? So this is ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. And I'm going to lift up my hands. Clapping um, sends a message to our brain. This is fun. This is what we're going to do. We always do that for appreciation. So here we go on the count of three. Ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. One, two, three. Ho, ho, ha, 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 ho, 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 Ho ho ha 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 there we go see that raising your arms you know and we know that that increases circulation up to your head through your carotids you know now another one and this is in honor of my daughter who's not here but who is leaving for Hawaii it's um how do you say hello in Hawaii anyone want to throw it out mahalo Aloha. Aloha. And it ends with a ha. So it is now a laughter word. So aloha ha is what you would do. So if we were all together in a laughter circle um, in, in person, we would extend our hand and or you can do a fist bump or you can just gesture and you would say aloha ha 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 ha. So I'm going to ask you to um, look into the camera. You can look into me. I'm looking at all of you. <laughs> and we're going to do a low ha 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 ha. Okay. One, two, three. A low. A low. Ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. Ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. Ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. Yay. 
Okay. So there's many, there's um, actually a library of over 200 laughter exercises that we could go through from the roller coaster laugh um, all the way to one that I'm going to show you now, which is the ice cube down the back laugh. And the reason I show you this is because this is also one where you can just, you know, you're sitting in your chair uh, working at your computer and you're like, oh, will this report ever get done? Oh, I got one more Zoom meeting, <laughs> whatever that is. <laughs> and you'll just remember this. You may not want to break into the laugh, but you can use your imagination, which your body doesn't know the difference. When you're thinking this stuff, you know, it's just like when you can talk yourself into a really bad idea and you're pretty soon your eye, your body's just like this. Same thing, if you start thinking this and start remembering things of your best friend when you two laugh and you laugh so hard, oh my gosh, your stomach hurts. Or you have a pet, watching dogs, puppies, kittens, um, watching children play, they get it. So when many times as adults, we're like, oh, I'm so sad, you know, how do I find more laughter in my life? They're around you, you know, just look at them. So here we go with the ice cube down the back laugh, laugh. So this is pulling your shirt back, pretending as if you dropped an ice cube down your back and now you're gonna laugh as it melts down your back, okay? So on the count of three, life um, ice cube down the back laugh. Okay, drop an ice cube, now one, two, three. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh man, that is cold. Aloha. Is that cat? Yes. <laughs> I love it. What? Awesome cat. Uh, Cracking us up so much. Now, if you're if you don't have cat with you and you don't have someone that you know, <laughs> you can also do things that that you can find that have laughter sounds and that will trigger you. This is like this little laughter pill. <laughs> you can also learn. This is my bag from Clown Camp. You know, so whenever I see that, I'm back at lacrosse in 2005. That's how long ago it was. But anyway, um, or you can learn magic tricks. So this is one here that is, um, how would you, um, okay. So would anyone like to see me make this tennis ball multiply? Yes. Okay, thank you. Sure. <laughs> two times two is four. Two times three is six. <laughs> so you can do this like with, like even with kids, you know, all this is is a tennis ball, putting it in the, oh, see, I probably need to plug that. Put a slit in it and you put eyes on it. So it's very simple. We're talking about not a lot of skill in learning a magic trick, <laughs> but magic tricks, again, going along the idea of putting more fun and laughter in your life is it's the surprise, right? It's the unexpected. So, um, and then you can always go for the clown nose. So this is like always good to have available. You can have these in <laughs> your um, glove boxes. You can, you know, in the, in the car, you can have this ready at your desk. It doesn't mean you have to wear it all the time. <laughs> it means you could be in a conversation with someone that you're really, it's really challenging. And you think, you know what, if this doesn't change soon, the way this is going, I'm going to have to pull out my nose, you know, and just knowing that kind of changes the whole scenario of where you're at. Okay, next slide. I think we'll go back to slides. I'm sorry. Thank you all for participating. And I love your picture, Kat. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to continue. Next slide. Talking about the time here. So once again, keep the, this is another um, idea of how to put that joy back in your life or not back in your life, but be more aware of it. It's always there. It's just waiting. If you kind of almost give it a face, like um, some playful child, maybe a picture of a time when you were like three, four or five, and that's inside of you. It's just waiting. It's always there. So connecting and savoring your why. Why did you become a nurse? I mean, we have the most awesome, awesome job. I mean, we get to be with people at a time when they are at their greatest crisis. And we are there. 
We are there when their family many times cannot be there for them. And we get to be there. And you are not there by any accident. Whatever patient experience you've had, you've been put there on purpose. Many times you think, oh, I could do without that purpose. <laughs> but no, you were the one that needed to be there. You were the one that needed to handle that. That is how you start really growing that whole, what I call a mirth light, you know, and that whole thing about joy. That's deep. Your people, nature, as I mentioned, you know, we used to laugh about this, you know, person being a tree hugger. There's a lot of evidence. And now the forestry, there's a whole nature walking thing, people that have never let that go. And they go out and they really hug trees. And just that energy, everything about us is energy. We're energy. You are a light. You are this ball of energy that needs to be there with these people at that one time. So when you think about how incredible you are and noticing all those gifts that you bring to the bedside, or if it's on the telephone or it's through a computer, through tele, however that happens, that is your calling. That's your why. And then you figure out how to keep in touch with what's inside of you. Next slide. So Rumi, always remember you are braver than you believe stronger than you seem, smarter than you think, and twice as beautiful as you'd ever imagined. Yesterday I was clever, so I wanted to change the world. Today I am wise, so I'm changing myself. Next slide. So I just put this heart in there. It's kind of a word cloud thing that I did. And you know, be here now is like something I've always used. Ram Das wrote a book about that. Um, but, you know, just knowing, uh, no judgment. Somebody cuts me off in traffic, and of course, you're going to be a little, uh, little maybe perturbed. <laughs> and what, you know, the thought is, oh, like, I've never done that to somebody else. Believe me, I'm not done it intentionally. <laughs> But we all know that everything that we get so upset and crazy about with other people, we may not have done that exact thing, but we've been maybe not mindful at the time when we've done something simple. So that's always kind of helped me too, that whenever I get upset about something, you know, if I, you know, oh, he cut me off, uh, like I have too, you know, so anyway, with that, any questions that we have to respond to? I don't see any in the chat, but Casey, did you catch anything? Nope, no questions yet, but guys, uh, feel free to throw them in the chat and I can read them out loud. So you don't have to ask them out loud if you don't want to. Okay. And you know, if you wouldn't mind in the meantime too, Nicole, if we could go to the next um, slide. Sure. And um, I'll show, <laughs> of course I hit the chat button now. So <laughs> Let me get rid of that. Uh, let me see here that out okay um so these are some references and i put foundational references only because as you're interested in learning more about laughter and um uh maybe you've got project i noticed in the questions from beforehand some people were interested in things that they could do with their patients as well as how to put more things back in their life with joy there these are just some really good ways of not only um um, ideas of how to use play and laughter. But for instance, Dr. Amy Johnson there, the little book of big change. Um, this is a coaching program that I'm, uh, I completed and it was life changing for me. Um, she, um, uh, there's a whole philosophy of about, it's just really helped me when I started looking at things that when my thoughts, that I was allowing my thoughts to really drive where I was, um, knowing that it's just a thought, it's a human being thing, it's what we do as humans, and just allowing that to move through, it will change. Um, that was so huge for me and comforting. It uh, did things like really allowing me to understand maybe people that I had been challenged with before, that um, just starting to understand if somebody came from a time when it was super challenging for them, maybe they were, maybe they were in a war or uh, they experienced a whole crisis of losing family totally, knowing and seeing their strength, 
started to change how I looked at them and how I experienced the things that they would say to me and really worked with opening my heart more. Um, another person who really follows with that philosophy is Michael Neal. You'll notice his book down at the bottom, The Inside Out Revolution, The Only Thing You Know to Change Your Life Forever. So again, these are, if you're really wondering about your thinking, these are good things to bring up. Laughter and the power of that Norman Cousins book, you can't go wrong with that. I mean, it's 1979, but he changed our world um, just totally rocked it with the idea of psychoneuroimmunology that we are only still light years away from understanding. And then um, also, um, um, excuse me, Ingrid um, Lee, her book, Joyful, The Surprising Power of Ordinary Things to Create Extraordinary Happiness. She's piled a whole bunch of research in there on things like how to decorate your home to bring more joy. Um, just, um, it's, it's just, it was her design and research project. And so then she has culminated this work that's just amazing with um, everything that you could think of to bring joy in your life. Um, so, and then down at the bottom, she unfortunately has since um, died, but at the bottom is Wooten, that's Patty Wooten. Her book, Compassionate Laughter Just for Your Health, was an incredible nurse um, clown in the San Francisco area. She totally changed the world of nursing in so far as how we could do with communication and adding nursing and um, uh, clowning and that. So uh, really great read. And then the next slide. Um, so these are some links. Um, the Association for Applied and Therapeutic Humor or other professionals that would be interested in laughter, comedy warriors. This is taking um, our warriors through the um, different wars and giving them skills for comedy. Dream Doctors in Israel, they have the Dream Doctors, which is this incredible group of medical clowns that work with adults all the way to children. Um, and then the rest of the websites are all National Humor Month, I might mention to you, is April. And so um, not by any coincidence that April 1st, <laughs> so we'll be moving into 2021. They have a lot of resources on that National Humor Month, things that you can print off, projects that you can do. So yeah, and then I think that's it for the next slide. I think that was just the end then. So yeah, any questions pop up since then? No questions. Oh. Oh, sorry, I, Matt. Yeah, no go. problem. Yeah, uh, when you send this recording, will it be along with the slides so we can access all those re references and sources? I sure will, Kat. I was just going to say to wrap it up, I okay. will share all of the slides and images in our Bevy wrap up. So along with the recording, you can check out all the slides and all the resources. So, oh, fantastic. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Debbie, this was wonderful. I feel yeah. so joyful right now, which is not something I personally felt in a while. So thank <laughs> you so much. Hopefully everyone else in the call feels the same. We're really grateful that you shared your time and all of your experience with us. So thank you. Well, I'm so grateful that you all gave of your time to be here. And I think if you reflect, if you do feel any different right now, um, that, that's a great opportunity to notice what you're thinking has maybe been doing to you, what it can do to you. And just be here now and um, have fun. Um, there's so much of life that we've got going for us. For so sure. Thank you all. So grateful. Sure. Debbie, thank you again. And to all of you who joined us tonight, thank you very much, especially in these crazy, crazy times. We're really grateful that you're taking time for yourself and to bring joy to others as well. So thank you. And as always, as I said, we will be sharing out all the slides and the recording probably within the next day. And we have a lot of events coming up and all of your feedback is really important to us. So you'll get a survey in about 20 minutes. Please share how this was for you, good, bad, and indifferent. We want to hear it so we can continuously get better and, and help you in all of your nursing endeavors. So again, thank you all for joining us. Debbie, thank you again. You were wonderful. And we'll see you all hopefully very soon. Night, y'all. Bye, everyone.